now this is a uh, objective oh, sorry subject is solved example question number 16th quadratic now in this uh, question uh, it's a degree and equation is given this just see this degree and equation is given x to the power n plus a1 x to the power n minus 1 plus a2 x to the power n minus 2 goes on and it is given that uh, the roots of this equation are alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 goes on now uh, and and uh, this this expression this expression is given less than zero. We have to show that this equation will have at least two roots. At least two of the roots are imaginary. So let's quickly re repeat the question. The degree n equation is given whose n roots are alpha one to alpha n. And this expression which involves the coefficient of x to the power n minus one and coefficient of x to the power n minus 2 is negative and if this expression is negative then this equation will have that is what we have to show this equation will have at least two roots imaginary non-real at least two roots non-real now to do this uh, the, the very the, the first two steps are very obvious uh, you know a1 is involved in the sum of the roots of an equation you know sum of the roots equals to minus coefficient of x to the power n minus 1 divided by coefficient of x to the power n this is sum of the roots alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 this is what I have written here and then we have product of roots taken two at a time alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 2 alpha 3 goes on or we can say sigma alpha 1 alpha 2 is coefficient of x to the power n minus 2 divided by coefficient of x to the power n right so this is what I have written here now I replace the value of a1 to get an idea of the rules I replace the value of a1 in the given expression a1 is is minus of sigma alpha 1 square so minus square will become positive 2n times a2 a2 is sigma of alpha 1 alpha 2 so I've changed the form of the given expression and I've written it like this now after that I combine the terms I take n common from this first term sigma alpha 1 square and then combined with this minus 2 times sigma alpha 1 alpha 2 right and then in minus sigma alpha 1 whole square right I've I have, uh, uh, have broken down this into two parts and I combine this with this and the minus one I have keeping it separate now this n times this becomes you know I can write this as sigma of alpha 1 square right sigma of alpha 1 square minus submission alpha 1 whole square because you know this is the property I am using submission of alpha whole square is summation alpha square uh, right plus 2 times summation alpha 1 alpha 2 so difference of these two is this that's what I have used the formula and this formula is nothing but you know this is like alpha 1 plus alpha 2 whole square we can write as alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square plus 2 alpha 1 alpha 2 and if we have three terms alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 whole square same we use the same formula alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square plus alpha 3 square that is sigma alpha 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 1 square plus 2 times of sigma alpha 1 alpha 2 maybe we can write alpha 1 here so after that now this has been simplified to To st we need to see how we can simplify this and how we can see and how we can use this is less than equal to 0 to take this we take to understand this we take n equals to 2 if n is 2 this expression is 2 times uh, summation of uh, or we can write summation alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square minus uh, alpha 1 plus alpha 2 whole square replacing the value of n equals to 2 so it is you know 
will get uh, 2 times alpha 1 square 2 times alpha 2 square minus alpha 1 square minus alpha 1 square minus 2 times alpha 1 alpha 2 now if we simplify this it is alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square because we can combine this with this combine this with this this becomes minus 2 times alpha 1 alpha 2 so it becomes alpha 1 minus alpha 2 whole square right so if we take n equals to 3 similarly you can see n equal to 3 means 3 times alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square plus alpha 3 square minus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 whole square so we simplify this we will get uh, after subtraction 2 times alpha 1 square 2 times alpha 2 square 2 times alpha 3 square minus 2 times alpha 1 alpha 2 2 times alpha 2 alpha 3 minus 2 times alpha 3 alpha 1 now we take 1 alpha 1 from the side 1 alpha 2 from the side and combine with alpha 1 alpha 2 becomes alpha 1 minus alpha 2 whole square we take 1 alpha 2 from the side 1 alpha 3 from the side and combine with minus 2 alpha 2 alpha 3 it become alpha 2 alpha minus alpha 3 whole square and same here alpha 3 minus alpha 1 whole square right so this way it in, in, in this expression we are saying less than 0 it is not because all these terms are positive all these terms are positive so how can this be less than 0 it can be less than 0 if not all all the roots are real because you know uh, when we take square of a real number it is positive but when we take square of imaginary number it is negative so it means some some of at least two roots are negative two, two roots are imaginary so that we can take iota common and, and this becomes negative right so either alpha 1 alpha 2 are imaginary or alpha 2 alpha 3 are imaginary so that way at least two roots would be imaginary and then don't don't worry about the general expression which is written that so the specific taking specific cases it is easy to understand